This is the story of Alf Plays Detective. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it is time to turn the page when you hear the chimes ring like this. Let's begin now. It was after midnight, and Alf had just finished watching a detective movie. He sauntered out onto the back porch, dragging a sack of potatoes. Ha! Ah, good movie! I love late-night TV. Now for a few cold spuds while I wait for the morning paper. Alf was settling in when he noticed an eerie, pulsating light coming from a house down the street. Whoa! A mystery right here in my own neighborhood. Oh boy, oh boy! The old Alf forgets to do some investigating. Alf crept through a back alley and hid behind some bushes next to the mysterious house. When he peeked out, the windows were dark. Hey, that's weird. The blinds are drawn, and the lawn needs some serious mowing. This place looks deserted. Alf had just about decided he'd been imagining things when another flash of light caught his eye. There it is again! It's coming from inside the garage. He slid silently along the garage wall to a position beneath a high window. Steady, Alfer. The answer to your mystery is right inside that window. If you can just climb up high enough to see in. Hey, what's that over there? A trash can. Just the investigative tool I need. Alf turned the empty trash can over, placed it under the window, and crawled up on top. He took a deep breath and peered over the windowsill. Inside, a man was hunched over a table working feverishly. Sparks flew, bathing his face in an unearthly glow. Giant shadows danced on the walls. Suddenly, the man glanced up. Alf ducked, but as he did, the trash can wobbled and tipped over. Whoa! As Alf crashed to the ground, the light inside the garage flickered out. Oh no, he's on to me. Time for a hasty retreat into the shadows. Alf scrambled to the bushes and huddled in the dark. The side door of the garage slowly creaked open. A flashlight beam cut through the night as heavy footsteps approached. Alf could only see the shadowy outlines of a man behind the beam of light. The man looked at the trash can, then turned toward the bushes. Alf trembled, then cleared his throat. <coughs> meow, meow. The man trained his flashlight on the bushes next to Alf. Then he clicked off the flashlight and slipped back into the garage. Alf sprinted up the alley, ran home, and bolted the door. Wow, that was close. My first undercover operation, and I impersonate a cat. Being a detective is rough work. At breakfast the next morning, Alf told Lynn and Brian about his late night adventure. Lynn shook her head. Alf, that's terrible. You shouldn't be sneaking around at night looking into people's windows. Sneaking? I was investigating. Doing good, solid detective work. Brian tried to help. I've heard the kids talking about that house. It's spooky. The owner's name is Mr. Litwack. Good work, Brian. Litwack, huh? What's he like? Brian explained that no one in the neighborhood had ever met him. Alf grinned. You see, Lynn? He could be a mad scientist. Or a spy. Maybe he's an alien. Oh, ha, ha. National security may be threatened, and you're making jokes. Very funny. Late that afternoon, Alf went back to work. Now what would those TV detectives do? I know, a stakeout. It's where you hang around eating stale sandwiches and waiting for something to happen. Let's see, I'll need bologna, salami, liverwurst, a loaf of rye. That should hold me for the first five minutes, but then what? Hey, I've got it. Brian has an instant picture camera. I'll borrow it and get all the proof I need. Alf stationed himself in the weeds outside Litwack's house. 
He polished off the sandwiches, then crawled through the grass, taking pictures of everything in sight. Just then, an unmarked van pulled up to Litwack's house. The driver left a package on the doorstep and sped away. Al snapped a few pictures and chuckled to himself. Very clever, Litwack. Secret deliveries in broad daylight? That may fool some people, but not the old Alfred. Al found a comfortable spot behind a tree and settled down to wait. The next thing he knew, the sun had set. Well, well where am I? What time is it? Nine o'clock. I've been sleeping for four hours. He looked at the doorstep. The package was gone. Then he noticed something else. Footprints. And they lead right to Litwack's garage. Alf hurried over to the garage window where he heard voices coming from inside. It sounds like someone with a foreign accent. Russian, maybe. Alf raced home. As he burst through the door, he tripped over Lucky the cat, and his pictures scattered. Lynn and Brian heard the commotion and came over. Lynn looked at the mess. Alf, what is all this stuff? It's evidence. Proof positive that Litwack is a spy. And get this, Lynn. He got a secret delivery, and then I heard him talking to somebody who had a Russian accent. Lynn took Alf by the hand. Alf, a lot of people get packages every day, and a lot of people speak with an accent. It doesn't make them spies, you know. Oh yeah? Then explain this picture. Lynn examined the photo. It's blank. Of course it's blank. It's the side of the unmarked van. Brian picked up a handful of photos. Alf, I can't tell what any of these pictures are. Hey, I had to take them from undercover in the tall grass. That's all the more proof. It's a well-known fact that spies are so busy spying, they never have time for yard work. Lynn gathered up the photos and handed them back. I'm sorry, Alf, but the only thing the pictures prove is that you're getting carried away with this detective business. Lynn and Brian said goodnight and went upstairs to get ready for bed. As Lynn entered her room, she glanced out the window. She ran to Brian's room. Put your shoes back on. I just saw Alf heading for Mr. Litwax again. Brian looked out the window. No wonder Alf went over there. Something's going on in Litwax's driveway. Do you think Alf could have been right? I don't know, but let's hurry. Down the street. Alf peered through the bushes as Litwack unloaded the back of his car, carrying box after box into the garage. Alf crawled closer and tried to grab some evidence out of the trunk. As he reached inside, someone tapped him on the shoulder. Ah! Quiet, Alf. It's only us. It was Brian, with Lynn behind him. Hey, you guys. Glad to see you finally joined me. You're just in time to help me nab old Litwack. Just then, the garage door swung slowly open. Alf dove into the bushes, but Lynn and Brian were frozen in fear. A shadowy figure emerged. Who's there? Lynn hesitated, then moved forward. Mr. Litwack, I'm Lynn Tanner, and this is my brother Brian. We saw someone in your driveway, and we were just checking to see if everything was okay. Litwack stepped into the light. He was a small man with thinning hair. Oh, that was only me. I'm kind of shy, so I do most of my work at night when there aren't many people around. But you know, even then, I often feel someone is watching me. I guess that sounds kind of silly. Brian looked at Lynn. No, not at all. Litwack smiled nervously. It was very kind of you to be concerned about me. When you live alone, it can be hard to make friends. This is the first time anyone from the neighborhood has shown an interest in me. Lynn glanced at the bushes. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Brian studied Litwack's open trunk. What's all this? Mostly welding supplies. Come on, I'll show you. Litwack led them into his garage, where he pointed to a tangle of parts and wires on his workbench. I've been making repairs on my shortwave radio. 
I welded on a new antenna and had some new parts delivered this afternoon. The short wave is my favorite hobby. It's the way I meet people. Why, just this afternoon, I discussed chess moves with a man from Moscow. Lynn shot another glance in Alf's direction. That sure explains a lot. Lynn put her arm around her little brother. Well, we'd better be getting home. It was nice meeting you, Mr. Litwack. Brian waved as they left. See you later. Mr. Litwack waved back. Come back again if you'd like. On their way out, Lynn checked the spot where Alf had been hiding. But he wasn't there. We'd better get home, Brian. There's no telling what Alf's up to now. At the Tanner's house, Lynn and Brian found Alf speaking into Willie's shortwave radio. And then I said to him, There's another six million light years away. Ah, yeah, I kill me. Well, gotta go. Catch you on the flip side, old buddy. Lynn stared at the alien. Alf, who were you talking to? Yo, Lynn, it was my old pal Litwack. Brian couldn't believe it. An hour ago you thought Litwack was a spy, and now he's your old pal? Sure. You know, Brian, just because somebody's different from you doesn't mean he's not a nice person. As Brian stared in disbelief, Alf got up. Come on, you could help me with my next case. The mystery of the missing cake. I just saw the cake in the kitchen. It's not missing. It will be. Ah! That was the end of the story. If you'd like to hear it again, just turn the tape over.